are the hearts of the people. تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ so Allah Ta'ala says that yet verily it is not their eyes that have become blind, but blind have become the hearts that are in their breasts. Alati fi sudur. This is a unique and beautiful point that is present in this verse. Allah Ta'ala has mentioned vision, the ability to see. Every human being is aware of this quality, of this characteristic of man, that where we speak about seeing and looking, and sight, then obviously for seeing and looking in sight, you need eyes. Without eyes, we cannot talk about looking or seeing or vision. How can we say this? If we don't have eyes, can we say that the wall is looking? We can't, because the wall doesn't have eyes. Or can we say that the rock is looking? Why? Because the rock doesn't have the eyes. Or that the tree is looking, the tree doesn't have eyes. So we don't say this. If there are eyes, then the person can see or something can see. And the blind will be that thing or that person which has eyes or who has eyes. So first the eyes have to be present and there has to be vision. And when there is no vision in sight, then we say the person cannot see or this thing cannot see. Clear, isn't it? Clear and simple. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated that the eyes, they are fine. Yes, we know that if there's light and there's vision, and if you don't have that, then you cannot see and you'll be blind. But Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in this verse that the heart is blind. It's the hearts that have become blind. And how do the hearts become blind? So what we realize here is that definitely in the heart there are eyes. Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. Allah, Allah Ta'ala knows best His creation. He knows best His creation. And in the heart, Allah Ta'ala has installed eyes or instilled eyes. And that's why Allah Ta'ala is saying that the heart becomes blind. But obviously the heart can see. There must be eyes. That the eye that we have on our face, the eyes on our face, the, these can only see limited things. Limited things and not beyond that. It cannot see behind the wall. If it looks up, but there's a limit, there's a had, a boundary beyond which the eyes cannot see. And if we look down onto the ground, it cannot see beyond, beneath the ground. What is on top, it can only see. So this is the function of the eyes medically. It is a limitation. But the eyes of the heart, what is the power of the eyes of the heart? This is something, a beautiful, unique power that Allah has given to the eyes of the heart. Its vision is such that a person whose eyes of the heart are open, when he looks up, he sees the arsh. When he looks down, he sees the layers beneath, the layers beneath, the layers. And from the hand, he can see through, through the, the, the assistance of the hand, through the uh, vast dunya. And there are no veils in front of that person. Because the eyes of the heart are very strong and powerful indeed. Then on the day of judgment, we will wake up blind. Allahu Akbar. So from this statement, we should understand that the whole dunya, how will the people rise up except for those people who made the eyes of the heart alive. That those people whose eyes of the heart are open, go in front of them and be careful going with them because they have vision. They don't look up, they scan you within. They scan you within. That this person is sitting down giving me sweets, but inside his heart, he's maybe swearing at me. He came to me to learn dhikr, but inside what impurities are present. But due to haya, modesty and shame, they have been given such a maqam, that they, they will keep on doing your islah, but they will never tell you your defects. If they were to make your defects apparent, the people of vision and basira, then tell me what would be the hal of the people. And there are people like this, whose vision, their light, their eyes have opened. The eyes of their heart have opened. They don't look at your heart, how many valves are sealed or, or, or vessels are blocked. They'll say, this person is a monafic, he's coming, he's praising me, respecting me. And look inside him, he's a hypocrite. And to go to that person, only there will we get proper rectification. Only there will we get proper Islam. Their words, those whose eyes of the heart open, they don't understand what's in your brain, but they tell you what's defective in your heart. In their majalis, when you go and sit in their majalis, then you will understand their words. Who wants to send you praise Salah, you do dhikr, mashallah, and you have corrected your appearances, and, and mashallah, you call yourself Naqshbandi and Dhaqirin, and you sit down every morning, you bow your heads and do dhikr. So it looks like from this that we don't want to do sins, we want to leave the sins, isn't it? We want this, don't we? So then why do we commit the sins again after that? So the reason for this, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, is that if you want to save yourself from sin, then the eyes of your heart illuminate them, and then you will not commit the sins. 
you will not commit the sins. So the reason for this is that you've not paid attention to your eyes of your heart. And this dahiri eye on your face that we emphasize on this and we worry about this, we're looking at the Quran or we're going to the masjid, looking how to get to the masjid, praying salah. If our eyes were alive in our heart, and when we pray salah with the heart's eyes, we'll see the reality of salah. We'll feel the enjoyment of the salah. Imagine that we will see the thawab that is coming from paradise when the person is praying. When a person is reciting Quran, who are those people that all night long they recited Quran, they wouldn't feel sleepy. The reason was this, because when they recited the Quran, the eyes of the heart was alive and they used to wander in paradise because the visibility is going and there's weakness. So the eyes of the heart, have we ever thought about it like this? That if we we do dhulmat e fisk, fujur, sins and darkness, evil, opposition to sharia, opposition to sunnah. All of these things cause the heart's eyes to be blind. Lying, sinning, backbiting, all of these sins are committed and affect the heart and then the veil comes in front of the heart. The cataract comes in front of the heart. A veil, a curtain, darkness, one veil, two veils, three veils, four veils, layers upon layers of veils come on our heart due to our sins, due to our fujur, our isyan. Our evil. We don't realize to this extent that just like an eye physically on the face becomes blind due to the cataract, the same way the eyes of the heart, because a very valuable thing Allah has given it becomes blind to the surroundings of reality. Okay, it's blind. Allah Ta'ala says, fair enough. It's blind. What do you do now? So your heart's eyes are blind. But is there no cure? When we have an infection in the eye or a pain, we go doctor, eye surgeon, eye specialist, optometrist, optometrist, that please can you correct my eyes? There's a problem I can't see. So And so why don't we operate on our heart's eyes so we can look with the eyes of the heart in this dunya and we rise up as Imam al the Imam of the Prophets. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Our Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Who knew the most from all of the human beings And knew the maraid And the illnesses, diseases Who looked after the hearts Who rectified the hearts For the whole of the universe Rasulullah wa sallam mentioned That your heart has eyes Correct it Correct it Correct the sight of your eyes Do dhikr of Allah in abundance To correct the sight of your eyes The vision from your eyes What is the cure? Dhikr Allahi Akbar Dhikr Allah in abundance. A person when he does dhikr Allahi, then the veils on the heart start to be removed. The curtains are undrawn and they are open. And then the light on the eyes of the heart starts to become illuminated, stronger intensity. But which dhikr is there that makes the eyes of the heart alive? Open. That the person who does dhikr in this way, who remembers Allah in this way, that he is regular on sharia, he implements sharia, Allah Ta'ala's orders and that sister or brother is regular, consistent on following sunnah and totally, totally there is not a morsel, one hair's width of haram in that person's life. Listen to this carefully. These are the conditions of doing dhikr that will make the heart alive. This is not a drama. This is not a game. Such a big muqam for making the eyes of the heart open to be regular in sharia, practicing sharia. Practicing sunnah regular and total avoidance of haram. What Allah Ta'ala says haram, totally leaves, she leaves. Question doesn't arise. And a person totally will follow sharia and Allah's orders. When a person comes into this condition and does dhikr of Allah directly, the veils of his heart automatically will. will. The dunya, the some for example action of the dunya, we seek someone in the world, who is this, I need his help and I need this person's assistance and influence. Will those people awake, be awake and thereafter go khalis and pure to the company of the wali of Allah, even if dunya dunya is there, don't leave with dunya because that dunya will never have barakah, blessings. Remember my points very clearly. If you are going to the majlis of the wali of Allah to earn dunya, that for example, you have looked at someone else and you're creating a connection in the majlis for business, I tell you the haqiqat, the reality, that yes, your business will get fulfilled, but there will be no barakah for the rest of your life, because there's only one pure reason for coming to the majlis of the wali wala, is to do your islah. You're coming to a great person, to a great, great journey, and he's taking you to your destination, that he is making the eyes of your heart alive. And open. But that's why we don't learn anything in these majalis. Because we come here for dunya's sake. To learn for dunya, to make connections with dunya. Allah says, so let's update, upgrade, maintain our iman and our hearts. So we can have visibility from the eyes of the heart. How will we do this? Following sharia, sunnah, holding on to these two things with firmness. And practicing this in the path of Allah. So many places in the Quran, you are hafid. How many times does Allah say, Atiullah wa Rasul? Is this a drama? Atiullah wa Rasul. 800 times Allah mentions dhikr. Is this a drama? 
Is this a game? Allah is just saying it was he just thought I'll tell you, I'll just say it for the sake of it. Tell me. Is this we have no importance for what Allah is guiding? Every ibadah Allah is defined. Every ibadah Allah Ta'ala in parallel says dhikr, salah, pray salah, salah is a great action. Do dhikr of Allah in parallel. Allah says hajj, do my dhikr in parallel. And there is no ibadah, there is no worship that is unpar- without dhikr in parallel. But we take the car from the auction, cheap bargain, and then we destroy that car. Then where does our journey end up? If we don't update it, maintain it, upgrade it, where will we go? Then we'll go where? 